professor here at Cohen Children's Hospital in Northwell Health, and today um, I'm going to tell you about him. So I first was introduced to CMO in Staten Island at Northwell Staten Island Hospital with David Hoffman, who's an oral surgeon there, and when I looked at him, I knew right away what he was born with, and I knew this was going to be a complicated, complex procedure to fix things. And unfortunately, the family didn't have insurance, but Michael Dowling, our CEO, agreed to do this pro bono, so we brought the family here to do the case. But the best way for me to tell you about him and to describe what we did was will be to show you. So I'm going to direct you over here. We have a presentation which is going to go through what we did and talk more about why we did it. So this is Simo as he was introduced to me as a nine-year-old boy uh, born in Portugal but lives with his mom and older sister who's also here uh, in the New York region. This is how he presented to me and I could see immediately that his orbits and eyes were too far apart and that they were also on a different plane horizontally and this was causing a condition known as exotropia in which the eyes went in different directions so with the left eye looking straight the right eye would look to the right and when the right eye looked straight the left eye would look to the left dr mittler you can you come up here so this is dr mittler who is our chief of pediatric neurosurgery who helped with the case and was intimately involved with the care. Uh, so you'll be, we'll be speaking to him in a moment. And then, so we, this is what we contended with and we knew um, with prisms it would help his vision but he still would have difficulty. So you can see from the worm's eye view and from a lateral view he also had a nasal deformity uh, with a wide high bridge and this contributed to his breathing or apnea problems. So we got a CAT scan which really defined what was going on and gave us a road map to figure out what we needed to do. And it, what he has was described by Paul Tessier who was the, kind of the grandfather of a lot of these craniofacial procedures. He and my mentor Dr. Kalmoto described this as two rare craniofacial clefts. These red, the red line depicts the midline cleft and the green line depicts another cleft which is off to the side. So this clefting system in, is almost like a clock where the zero is in the, starts in the middle, the facial clefts go one through seven and the cranial clefts eight through 14. So we kind of knew what he had and then knew what, what we needed to do. So we did do a procedure Dr. Mittler and I and Dr. Hoffman called a facial bipartition. So this procedure is depicted here in an illustration and it involves first Dr. Mittler doing a craniotomy. Now this in this case was some out SEMO uh, that the craniotomy was a little more complicated because of his deformity and he can touch on that. After we did that we had to loosen the face and make it sure it was completely mobile so we could resect the bone in the midline. That bone was abnormal and involved the ethmoid sinuses and then we were able to bring his two halves of his face together, thus the facial bipartition in order to correct the orbits and correct the eye position. And then finally to fix things in the midline with a resorbo plate and do a nasal bone graft all involved with doing the reconstruction uh, for SEMO. So here's just a couple interoperative views. We had to do nasal uh, rotation flaps. You can see before the surgery and on the table and right after the surgery, him still swollen here. And again, still swollen. You can see the differences in the eyes. This is him just bef at the time of the surgery. And then this is our team. This is right after the procedure. Dr. Mittler here, myself, and Dr. Hoffman, who was the first one to meet him in Staten Island. And then this is kind of where he was before when we met him. And this is him, he's still here recovering. He's in his post-operative uh, time period, so he's still swollen and still getting better, but he's really made a uh, remarkable recovery from a complex, complicated surgery. You can see, well, first on the frontal view, you can see how the eyes not just are closer together, but 
how they uh, he's able now to look with both eyes and have binocular view, whereas in the past that was not the case. As I mentioned, one eye would go forward, the other eye to the side. But now that the anatomy is correct, he can look and have and learn how to use a depth of field and other things. And then for his nose, the correct the nose is a better position anatomically and help with the breathing. So he's still recovering and still getting better. He's, he's going to go back to school tomorrow for his first day, and I know he's very excited about that. And actually, he was... <laughs> <laughs> I gave him one extra week off, and he was happy about that. So I'm going to, before we talk to Dr. Mittler and, and to Lisa and Simo, I just want to have you uh, this video, so... Facial made him get a lot of ear infections when he was small, which wasn't easy. His breathing, he slept with the CPAP machine for a while. Sure. Since he's heard about the surgery, he's been anxious, happy, turning your back, turning your back. Sometimes I don't really know what I am, so I try my best. What we usually do is, especially that, like the day before, we try to spend more time together watching TV sometimes. Instead of him sneaking into my bed, it's actually me that I, I'm the one that sneaks into his until he falls asleep. Or, um, I have to do this Just spend a little bit more time. At least that, the day before, around here. Make him feel even more special on that before the service. He actually has a lot of books, and we just try to the different things. He loves more everything that's good. It has to do with superheroes. Spider-Man, Flash. Oh, he doesn't really like that. He had one problem last year, towards the end of his school year, and he was cheated. And so he had the bus. So he started going again. But then he just got home. Last year I went to the school, spoke with them, teachers, solved the problem. They actually became friends then. And you and the one from last year, you told me you were friends. Not friends that you would deal with every day, but nothing <laughs> that you would bully him around. And this year, he was the one that actually went to talk to one of the teachers. And he comes home and he tells me, he doesn't, he's not afraid of coming home and saying, Mom, somebody picked up me. To be honest, I had an I had the idea that surgeons were a little, I should you say, uh, cold and kind of, you know, important. But I mean, I didn't have the idea at all. Good morning, I'm Dr. Mark Mittler, the uh, co-director of pediatric neurosurgery here. Um, and this, uh, this situation has certainly been an honor for me to take part in. You know, when Jim approached me about this uh, young boy, um, we had lots of discussions about him. And when I met him in the office and realized that here is a normal nine-year-old boy 
in all aspects trapped with this deformity. Um, I couldn't think of anything uh, more pleasing than to help fix this problem. My role here, I, this is one of those cases where I get to say I'm just the brain surgeon, because my role here is really just to give Dr. Bradley uh, access to the facial bones uh, at the bottom of the skull. And so what I did was open up the skull in this general region right here, move the brain backwards to allow access to the base of the skull and the orbits that surround the eyeballs. And once we were able to achieve that access after a few hours, um, Dr. Bradley was able to go in and, and do the things that he described in terms of bringing the eyeballs closer together um, and fixing the whole midline facial structure. Uh, and then we put SEMO all back together again. And uh, he just flew through his hospitalization and did beautifully and remained the neurologically normal kid now with a normal face. Uh, and so uh, there's, there's nothing um, uh, that's a greater honor than to take part in, in something like this and, and just watching him grow. So, thank you. Enough about the medical part. I want to have Lisa say a few words about her experience, and then we'll talk to the star then. Good morning. My name is Lisa, and first of all, I want to thank uh, CEO Mark Michael Downling for, I'm sorry, <laughs> for making this possible by accepting the pro bono. Thank Dr. Midler, Dr. Bradley, and Dr. Huffman, which I think they did an amazing job. And it's been hard, but it's made our life a lot easier. And I really don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. Can we ask any questions? Of course. So um, maybe as a mom, if you could explain what, what Simo was struggling with before physically, um, and, you know, like what, what uh, well, um, he would have to go through, for example, he would have to, one of the treatments was he has to, had to patch his left eye because he was going blind from his right eyes because it was, since it was, he, he wouldn't look straight with both eyes. He was what they, the doctors called uh, brain blindness with his, from his right eye, which was making him hard, it was difficult for him to walk around more than half a day with an eye patched. And then it was his sleeping, because he was breathing through his mouth, not through his nose. And then that would turn his entire day upside down. And so it was, he couldn't breathe? Through the nose, no. And so was, was he prone to more infections? Or what, what, what were your what were sinuses? He had, and he would uh, basically was more of what, um, since the, the, he wouldn't breathe through his nose, especially during the night. Uh, the, the, the brain wasn't getting uh, enough oxygen, and that would make him, he couldn't concentrate during the day. Um, he had a hard time to learn. He was more hyper. You spoke a bit about the bullying. As a mom, what was your mind? It was hard when he got home and told me that he was being bullied at school. First at school, last year was in school, this year was um, in the bus. But luckily, his school both times dealt with the situation, and it, and it didn't go go very far. But then again, he was also brave enough to come home and say that he was being bullied. It's pretty amazing that he you know, spoke up. As a mom, how do you feel knowing your son has made, made this amazing journey and, and powered through it? I mean, very proud of him. When you look at where he was and where he is now, when you look at your son, I mean, you love your son, he's your son. No matter him. what. He's a great kid, right? But now you're looking at him and, you know, what are you feeling inside when you look at him? It's hard to explain it. It's excitement and I'm proud. And he was handsome, now he's even more. And he knows that, right? <laughs> Wait, you yeah. You want to slide the mic over? Talk right into Hi. it. Do you want to hold it? No, okay. Okay. Can you maybe explain some of the things you were feeling before the surgery and what you feel like now? What was going on before? 
the door. Fast enough? Uh-huh. Was I slow or too quick? Too quick. Did you get too quick? Oh, yeah. I think I was a little slow. <laughs> Good thing I didn't trip. Would you have laughed at me if I had tripped? Huh? Would you have laughed at me if I had tripped? Nah. Just a little bit? Yeah. It would have been funny, right? Yeah. But good thing I didn't. And that means you're a very nice person. And I appreciate it. So how old are you? Nine. Nine? Right, I hear you're ready to go back to school soon? Mm-hmm. Are you really think that's gonna be really fun? Yes. I think it'll be fun. You have lots of fun, make lots of friends. Be running around, you're gonna run really fast all over the place. Are you a fast runner? Kinda. Kinda, kinda. Think you could beat me? No. I think you could. You don't know. That's what makes you super strong. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I mean, I don't know. Do you wanna go see Flash? You wanna go see Flash? Yeah. Sure. Superhero pose with me, or you want to do the fast running pose, or no, fast running pose? Hey, what's your fast running pose? Nice. You can get him one leg. You go. He's fast. Super fast. Yeah. Like it. I get a heroic handshake. Nice. Squeeze my hand like this. Oh no. How about superhero pose? Yeah, yeah. You and make sure you gotta look off to the right. Yeah, yeah. Or left, right. Not too quick. <laughs> I like it. Here we go. Yeah. You ready for the movie? Yeah, of course. What's up, buddy? Yes, perfect. Hug him. Put your hands on What's up, buddy? Your man. All right. That's yeah, perfect. 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 And then make right. the hero look off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Here we go. Cameras, right? <laughs> I'm scared too. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. 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 It
Yeah, that's perfect. Well, whatever. Yeah, that's very good. Are we going to make muscles? Okay, so there you go. Give him some muscles. Give him a pipe. This way. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, Mom, too. How you doing? Oh, so you got red shoes. Oh, Nelson has red shoes. There you go. All right. One more this way. Both of them. Smile. Both of them. There you go. Nice. Look this way, please. Thank you. There we go. Now we're going to see how strong you are. Fast. One more. One more. Yeah, I know, but I'm tired. See, they go, I almost got it. Give your hand there. Got it? There you go. They don't have to go on your place.